We use linear search when we want to find something in the array or check if something exists in the array. For example, if we want to linear search the number 40, then what we're actually doing here is we look at the first number. Is this number 40? No, it's not. So we move on to this one. Is this number 40? No, it's not. So how about this one? It's not 40. How about this one? Yes, we see that it is 40. So what we will do here is that we will return the index, which is number 3. So the result of this linear search is the number 3. How about number 9? Well, we see that it's not in this array, but how does this algorithm work? Well, we're going to start at the first one. Is this number 9? No, it's not. How about this number? No, it's not 9. This one is not 9. This one is not 9. This one is not 9. And so we're at the end of the array and we cannot find 9. In this case, we would return negative 1. And when we return negative 1, it just basically means that it's not inside this array. Let's talk about the recursive linear search. We have this linear search here and we want to find number 5 in this array. The first thing I'm going to do is that this is going to call linear search number two, which is a different function. And then it passes in the same list. We need to keep track of the index and the first index is zero, right? So it's going to be zero. And we have our target, which is number five. You will see why this works in a second, but this is where the recursion occurs. So it will call on itself again. And then we move on to the next element. So we move on to number five here. And because we move on to the next number, we increment this number right here. So it becomes one. Basically what this means is we're currently at index one, right? Because this is zero, one, and two. And currently we're at index one. And the number five stays the same. So as you can see, the first element of our list or array is the same as our target. So all we have to do is return the index that we're at, which is number one. So we're going to return number one here. It goes up the tree and at the very top, the result will be one, which makes sense, right? Because number five is at index one. What if the number we're searching for is not in the list? Well, first of all, we're going to call linear search two. It's going to pass in the same list. We have index zero to keep track of and the target stays the same. Then we recurse again. We move on to the next number. We increment the zero to a one and number two stays the same. And then we recurse again. We move on to the next number and then increment our index. And then we recurse again. And then this list becomes empty. We increment the number and we still have our target here. So as you can see, the list is empty and we were not able to find the number two inside this list. So once this becomes empty, all we have to do is return negative one, indicating that it is not in the list. So the negative one goes to the very top and that's how you get the result. Let's go over the code for the iterative linear search. So we define linear search and then we take in an array or let's rather a list for short and then the target that we want to search in the list. We're going to traverse through the list. So for i in range at the beginning, which is zero to the end of the list. And while we're traversing, if we find the element that we're looking for, so if li is equal to the target, then all we have to do is return the index, so return i. Otherwise, after this entire for loop and we haven't found it, then it means that the target is not inside this array. So we have to return negative one. Let's test it. So we want to find the number five in this array, and we know that five is at index two. And as you can see, the program produces the correct output. And if you search for something that's not inside this list, like number six, then you will get negative one. Let's write the code for the recursive linear search. So we take in a list, we take in a target, and the first step is to add in a second parameter, zero. So we return, we paste in linear search recursive, and we're going to add the number two. This means version two, and we have the list, we have zero, and then we have the target. Then we write the linear search recursive number two. It also takes in the list, it takes an in index, and then it takes in the target. So if this list is empty, then we must return negative one if you look at the recursion tree. And what happens when we found our target? So we always look at the beginning of the array. So if L at zero is equal to our target, then we must return the index. So return index. And if we haven't found our target, then we must move on to the next element. So return linear search number two. We move on to the next element. 
we increment the index and then we have our target let's go ahead and test it so we want to recursively linear search for number five in this array and as you can see the result is two because five is at index two how about number six well six is not inside this array so we return negative one indicating that it is not inside this array now that you know linear search in the next video we will talk about binary search so it basically does the same thing but it is more useful and we'll talk about why that is the case and i'll show you how to write it using a for loop and then using recursion and that is basically it for today i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you found it helpful please click like and if you want to buy me coffee for free please go ahead and click subscribe